We sometimes get asked about calculating the load requirements for lighting circuits with extra low voltage transformers installed and 12 volt down lighters being an example. A typical question for Learn Electrics might go like this. We have six 50 watt luminaires connected to six separate transformers and each transformer output is 12 volts at 4.2 amps each. If we add up all the loads for the lights we get 6 times 4.2 amps, which is over 25 amps. This is huge, so what size MCB should we install in the consumer unit? So, here is a simplified sketch of what they have asked about. A 230 volt supply looped to each of the six lighting transformers, one for each luminaire. The output is 12 volts, and at 50 watts, this means that each luminaire draws 4.2 amps if the total load to the luminaires is just over 25 amps, what should the rating be of the MCB on the 230 volt side? In this video, we could just tell you the answer, but you will understand much better if we also show you why the solution that we give will actually work. And we will start with an explanation of how the transformer functions and some very easy calculations to arrive at the answer. The transformer will have a primary winding, the input side. In this example, we will say that the input voltage is 240 volts, as this makes the first calculation easier to follow. It is basically just a coil of hundreds or even thousands of coils of fine wire. The actual number of coils or turns in the winding is determined by the manufacturer, and the input must be an alternating AC current. There is also a secondary winding, the output side. In the case of the lighting transformer, there are less turns on the secondary winding. This makes it a step-down transformer, less volts on the output side. Here, we have 240 volts stepped down to 12 volts. These turns or coils of wire on each side are electromagnetically linked by the transformer laminations. The output is AC, alternating current but some applications require a DC output, direct current. So some transformer assemblies will also include a smoothing circuit. This is an arrangement of electronic components that smooths the AC waveform and makes it into a DC waveform with a positive and negative connection. You should already be familiar with the power law triangle. Power divided by volts equals current. Some prefer to say that watts divided by volts equals amps. It's the same thing. Now, this is the important bit, and it will help if you can remember this. The power input of the primary is determined by the power output of the secondary. The secondary side determines the load on the primary side, so what happens last influences what happens first. The power or watts across the transformer is always equal. The primary or input watts is always equal to the demanded watts on the secondary side. And over the next few minutes, we will show you this. This page shows a formula that tells us about the turns ratio and how it affects the voltages. And the yellow box tells us what the abbreviations mean. If we divide the number of turns on the secondary winding by the number of turns on the primary, and then multiply this by the input voltage, we will arrive at the secondary voltage, the output voltage. This is shown here in simple numbers, just as an example. Our secondary side has 100 turns and the primary side 1000 turns. And that will give us 0 0.1. Multiply this by the primary voltage of 240 volts and we have a secondary voltage of 24 volts. It's that simple to do and this is an example of a step down transformer. Of course, in real life, we wouldn't know the turns ratio but we should know the primary and secondary voltages and the current demand in amps of the secondary side. This formula shows us that if we divide the secondary voltage by the primary voltage and then multiply this by the secondary current, we will find the primary input current of the transformer. So using our previous example again, 24 volts secondary divided by 240 volts primary and multiplied by the secondary current of, let's say, 5 amps, will show us an input current of 0.5 amps. 
The input voltage is higher than the secondary voltage, but the input current is lower than the secondary current. Now we come to the formula that gives us a very important rule. Understand this and your understanding of transformers will be greatly enhanced. It starts off as shown. The primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage is always equal to the secondary current divided by the primary current. Going back to the power triangle, we know that P equals V times I. Voltage times current gives us the power. Remember this. Now back to the formula and we've repeated it here. VP over VS equals IS over IP. And we can transpose or rearrange this. We can move VS from the bottom left to the top right. And we can move IP from the bottom right to the top left. This leaves us with a rearrangement of VP times IP equals VS times IS. We have just said that V times I is power. So this formula now shows us that the input power on the primary side, the P's, is equal to the output power on the secondary side, the S's. Now we can go back to our original question, the one that we started with. We have six 50 watt luminaires connected to six separate transformers and each transformer output is 12 volts at 4.2 amps each, giving a total demand of 25 amps. What size MCB do we need on the input side? Well now we know that the power total divided by the primary voltage will give us the primary current. And if we know the primary current, we can decide on a suitable rating for the MCB in the consumer unit. On the secondary side, each luminaire is rated at 50 watts. There are six of them, so the total power is six times 50, or 300 watts. If the secondary side is 300 watts, then so too is the primary side, 300 watts. Divide 300 by the nominal voltage of 230 volts, and we have a current demand of just 1.3 amps on the primary side. 25 amps output only needs 1.3 amps input. So our normal 6 amp MCB can easily cope with this demand. Let's have a short recap on what we've just done. The turns ratio will determine the output voltage. If the primary turns are greater than the secondary turns, the output voltage will be lower than the primary. This is called a step down transformer and is most commonly used for lighting. If the secondary side turns are greater in number than the primary, then this is a step up transformer and the output voltage will be higher. If we know the input and output voltage and we know the current drawn by the secondary, we can calculate the primary current. The primary power demand is determined by the secondary power demand. If we know the power on the secondary side and we know the primary voltage, then we can easily calculate the amps on the primary side. And then, if we know the primary current, we can determine the size of circuit breaker or fuse. And lastly, we showed that if we can calculate the total power on the secondary side, the power on the primary side will be the same. Now divide this power by the primary voltage, and the result is the load on the primary side. And this will tell you the minimum size of MCB required. And that is all there is to it. Hopefully you found this video useful and informative and you now understand transformers and load calculations a little more clearly. Thank you for watching this video, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, Enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all of our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page. 
and at the bottom of each page is a page selector page two three four and so on that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list and don't forget that you can also type in learn electrics all one word into the youtube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer we are constantly adding new videos to our channel don't miss the next one once again thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon